everyone. Welcome to Keto and Crime. Today, I've, I've got the honor of pleasure of one of my good friends, Carrie Smith from Deprogram. She's one of my favorite people to have on the channel. Um, Carrie, tell everybody a little bit about yourself and where they can find you. Thank you, Tracy. I love hanging out with you. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, you can find me at Deprogram with Carrie Smith anywhere where you listen to podcasts uh, on YouTube primarily, but also Rumble and um, um and yeah, real Carrie Smith, K E R I, real Carrie Smith on Twitter and Instagram and all those places. Awesome. And Carrie, y'all, if y'all go over there and follow her, she does a lot of great things. She has a steady recording and live streaming uh, schedule that she sticks to, unlike yours truly, who tries <laughs> to upload twice a week and never seems to make it, at least not this month. So I apologize for that. But she is a, she does some great pop culture stuff. She does political stuff and she does things just in the current zeitgeist and that's uh one of the things we're going to talk about today we, this this will trigger warning if if you get easily triggered this will have a lot of taboo subjects in it because we're going to be talking about uh mr fred l bubba copeland and if you google him you're probably going to see the terms victim transphobic atrocity murder victim uh forced into eliminating himself and you're, you're not going to see anything negative about mr bubba copeland and that is what we're going to discuss because the story goes a lot deeper than is being presented by mainstream media but um let's talk about who bubba copeland is bubba is a was the mayor of the small uh, Alabama town uh, near Opelika and Auburn in the uh, southwestern corner of uh, Alabama called Smith Station. And he was also uh, a pastor of the First Baptist Church of Phoenix City, which is just near there. And he was prominent in conservative circles. He met with Trump. He led the city through uh, an E, I believe it was an E7 uh, tornado that touched down there in 2019. So he did some good, but Bubba Copeland was living a secret life. And late October, uh, a story was broke by 1819 News that discovered his online uh, secret life and kind of exposed it for the world to see. And uh, Carrie was actually the one that cued me into this uh, case. She, because she knew I was from Alabama, you actually messaged me and said, "Hey, did you hear about this story?" Hmm. And uh, you've covered it several times on your channel. But um, I think one of the most interesting things that you'll see, and I, I just want to share something with the crowd, because Smith Station has only been incorporated for a little while. It's a uh, very it's kind of a, can everybody see? And mm -hmm. I know uh, what everybody's going to say. Tracy's doing uh, her research from Wikipedia. It's just a jumping off spot, people. <laughs> but Oh, but I have some, I have some interesting things to say about Wikipedia later. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh I have something interesting to, to say too. But if you see right here, what's at the top of his Wikipedia page, uh, he was an American politician and pastor and uh, until his suicide in 2023 and one thing that's very interesting is this lady right here, LaFay Dellinger. If you go to the uh, Smith uh, Station uh, Wikipedia page, the story, the blip about Bubba Copeland's right at the top about how he was victimized by transphobes. And we're going to get into the entire story. There's nothing about this woman here. And she was the previous mayor that served Smith Station from 2000 to 2016 when Bubba was elected. She stepped down in 2016, but from uh, she was on the board of incorporation for this tiny town in 1998 and then guided it through its entire incorporation into an actual city. And guess who's not on their Wikipedia page? LaFay Dellinger. And I think that uh, erasure, she was erased from uh, the history of uh, Smith Station, according to uh wikipedia but guess who wasn't bubba copeland and i think uh the erasure of women is quite prominent uh, in this story we're going to talk about mm -hmm. but basically why did he commit suicide well he was found to be living a secret life 
online as a transgender woman. And uh, Carrie, you have any thoughts? Well, so a couple far? things. It's he when he was outed, mm -hmm. he said he was not transgender. Mm -hmm. He gave a statement to 1819 News and said this was just a hobby. And and by the way, he wasn't just mayor of some stations. He was the pastor of First Baptist Church in Phoenix City, near, neighboring Phoenix City. Alabama. Right. And right. you can watch his sermons. They have Phoenix City has a YouTube page. You can watch his sermons. Mm -hmm. And he was up there preaching every Sunday while he was doing this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason this story angered me so much is once I started to look into it, um, he he was, it was primarily, and you tell me if I'm getting into any territory that's, you don't want me to talk about on your no. channel. He Maybe was not. writing and posting porn to multiple Reddit sites um, and he was taking pictures of himself and it wasn't just pictures of himself in various stages of dress as this woman, uh, his mm -hmm. alternate personality, but he was also writing these horrible stories, not just horrible in that they were filthy and degrading stories that he was writing and posting, but mm -hmm. horrible in that they were poorly written, but also <laughs> they were poorly <laughs> written, but uh also that they he was using in some of those stories the real names of women that he knew in town mm -hmm. women who were friends of his and his wife and he was one of the stories was an erotic murder fantasy and which he uh he fantasized about murdering the woman who was his friend whose real name he used he also Brittany, used the real Brittany also, Summerlin was the name that he used. And Brittany used. Summerlin is a local business owner. I believe she was a hairdresser in he, uh, Smith Station. And he was using, there he is with Trump. Uh, but yes, this is uh, his profile that he had. Brittany Blair Brittany Summerlin. Blair. And he had a profile on Reddit and he was active. You can see there he was active in some mm -hmm. of those communities. But he, in that murder fantasy, he he fantasized, he wrote about killing her and assuming her identity and becoming her and mm -hmm. tricking her husband into having sex with him. Yes. Because, oh, because yes. in this fantasy story, the husband couldn't tell the difference. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> so, and, and stealing in the last part of when he kills her, his friend in the story, he pushes her off a, a, a cruise ship and uh -huh. he, reach and there's a whole several paragraphs about reaching to make sure he snatches her wedding ring off her hand yep. before yep. she dies and so it, it he was he had some very sick dark fantasies about becoming hating and murdering and becoming the women he knew and then he he also um he also posted pictures of some of these women to porn sites and he posted pictures of children from his town to porn to, sites to transgender and right. gay porn sites yes. and uh the p word which I, we can't say because susan will have a shit fit but yeah. uh this is one of those stories that you're talking about. This is not the one, the murder fantasy of the, uh, and there's actually two women in the town that he used and their pictures mm -hmm. are plastered all over porn sites, thanks to him. But this is a story he wrote about a young boy that uh, is obsessed with BBW women and decides to become a BBW, decides to get rid of his girlfriend's twin sister and become her. So this is along those same veins. And uh, if any of you want to go to this uh, 1819 uh, article, I'll link it down below. If you want to purchase this uh, piece of literary genius, go ahead. I didn't read the whole thing. I only read the summary. That's all I needed to read. But everything he wrote, it wasn't just writing porn. If if you want to write romance novels or porn, go for it. You know, but this stuff bordered on sick. And the fact that this was a young boy, um it's just and that he also plastered as carrie said pictures of young boys from his town to accompany these stories yes he was a fan of what is called sissy porn mm -hmm. and sissy porn is i hate i hate it i absolutely hate it i actually don't encourage people to look at it to see what it is because i don't i i think it's the worst kind of porn you could probably view in my opinion mm -hmm. a lot of people who now describe themselves as trans men 
are trans women, a lot of biological men who now say they're women who came to it late in adulthood mm -hmm. um, and for whom it doesn't actually seem to be a case of gender dysphoria, like feeling like they were born in the wrong body as a small child, as yep. a toddler, all the way through their life. It actually mm -hmm. seems to be a sexual fetish like it was for this guy. Yeah. Autogonophilia. 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 So for a lot of onogonophiliacs, those fetishists who who get off on mm -hmm. imagining themselves as women, those kind of people who now get lumped in the tran under the trans umbrella, a lot of them credit watching sissy porn to turning them into women. Because it and it and it makes sense because it is a sexual fetish for them. And so they get hooked on the porn first, this particular kind of disgusting porn in my opinion and then they they have to go further and further until they start dressing like a woman and they start saying oh right. i'm a trans and woman. this yes. sissy porn talks about the subjects of the stories are drawn to feminine roles they like to dress like women they get their jollies off by dressing as women and people get sucked into that yes. and it's it's hard it's, it's horrible it's it's not it's, like but, any it's not like any porn no that you might be imagining it's not like oh and the plumber comes over and then they have sex no 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 it's actually a lot of it is um it's some of it's called sissy hypno porn and mm -hmm. they will have like hypnosis wheels spiraling on a screen while mm -hmm. you watch a man who's dressed as a bimbified version of a woman like a bimbo looking not a real woman but a total mm -hmm. you know they're uh, a autogonophile's idea of what a woman mm -hmm. is a pornified woman and you'll watch a man who's dressed that way performing some type of sexual act on another man and then there'll be words flashing on the screen to hypnotic music that's like telling you and it's written to you the viewer it says become a woman become a become a whore become a bimbo mm -hmm. and and Bubba Copeland wrote about this stuff he in his mm -hmm. in his porn he wrote sissy porn kind of stuff where become a bimbo he made these sissy porn kind of images with one with a little boy from his town and it said you know become a whore take the hormones you know take the the shots um and and it was a picture of a kid and then yeah. he took a picture of that little boy's older sister and put them side by side so that if you're just looking at this porn image and you know how, you don't know these children you think oh that little boy became that little girl no that's his sister but either way he's making pornography with these children's yep. pictures and, and they have two, no idea and two innocent women too uh, yes. that and because he he went beyond sissy porn he went sissy porn with a murder fetish Yes, as well, and is using their yes. pictures, and they, they're you'll never, they'll never get those pictures off the internet, unfortunately, because yeah. you know they can sue these sites, but somebody else has copied it and drug it somewhere else. I mean that those are forever, and yeah. the fact one of them's name is out there, and if you yeah. see the pictures that I showed, he dressed very much like a what an autogonophile thinks a woman is. And everybody's probably going, what is an autogonophile? It is a man that is turned on by him seeing himself as a woman and more importantly, seeing himself as a slut yes. <laughs> for lack of a better term. That is what an autogonophile is. So yes. the reason that I say that Bubba uh, Copeland uh, was not transgender is because he wasn't he was an autogonophile mm -hmm. I, I don't want transgender people mixed in with people like him but if you turn uh on the mainstream media or you google bubba copeland all you're gonna see is a transgender woman outed and she took her own life that's all you're gonna see yes and they really tried to make a boogeyman out of 1819 news craig uh, monger was the reporter and yeah uh, so because it was a conservative news site, they can just say, oh, big, bad, bully conservatives out this mayor and this trans, this poor, innocent trans woman who then takes her own life. And 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 then it snowballed beyond that, where you would see headlines that just say, you know, a right wing conservative Christian anti LGBT rhetoric and bullying, you know, that these are the boogeymen that led to this tragic loss of life. And it's like none of these stories i was getting angry and angry because none of the mainstream sources at first were covering the kinds of 
porn he was making and the the potentially criminal acts he was involved they in. They still aren't. You have to go yeah. deep, deep, deep into search results to find anything about it. I mean, they were just covering this transgender woman outed and takes her own life. That's pretty much all you could find. But I have, and they, you know, de uh, demonized 1819, but I read every article that 1819 released on him and they didn't just say he was a transgender woman. I don't think they would have even covered the story if that was it. If he was living a secret life as a transgender woman, I don't think they would have ever covered no, it. No, they wouldn't have. They it's... broke the story because he was a porn. He was a pornographer that was spreading the names of innocent people in his town on the internet. Yes. That's why they broke it. While, while, and this is the part as a Christian that really pissed me off, is standing mm -hmm. up there every Sunday and mm -hmm. leading his flock astray, mm -hmm. and and everything he said was nonsense then every Sunday somebody in so so there's on Facebook there's a group now it hasn't been as active this week it's kind of dying off a little I guess unless there's more uh, news that comes out but there was a group that was very active for the past couple months uh it's called FL Bubba Copeland aka Brittany Blair Summerlin's double life and this mm -hmm. is a public Facebook group. Um, I joined it because I was following news updates. They ended up making me a mod there. I was like, okay, I don't, I don't know what I need to do. But um, the lady who started it and I, I'll tell you this: there are a lot of the locals in that town feel like they cannot speak openly about things that either ha they say happen to them or to someone they know. And we started getting messages. I got a message from two different people. The woman who created the the group got a lot of messages from different people who were saying it went beyond what well, well, what he was doing in this town that his improper acts and illegal acts went beyond posting pornography and images of people without their permission right. online. There's definite crimes here. These right. what, what what we know he's done that is posting those pictures and uh, uh, from real life people in his town, especially children. That's a crime. If he were alive, he could be pros prosecuted and should be prosecuted for those crimes. We can't because he 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 took himself out. But those are crimes. And I, and like you said, there's an onion there and there's a lot more, I, I would suspect there's probably improprieties when it comes to the yes. office of mayor and improprieties when it comes to how he handled the church as well. Yeah. There's a lot of allegations. Some of those people posted in the group under the anonymous handle. Mm -hmm. um, other people just wrote to us and said, you know, do with this what you want, but I'm not willing to go public yet. And I didn't share anything because I felt like if you're not willing and to go public, and I these don't poor say, people, these yeah. poor people won't probably won't ever go public. He'll, he will go down as some tragic victim when in fact he's the victimizer. In my, in, in my opinion, he he even victimized himself by by by. I, as a newly uh, reminted Christian, and I'm finally saying that in public. I wow, I, I was, praise I was an, God! I didn't know I was, if you were out. <laughs> no, no, I wasn't. I'm not. I wasn't out <laughs> i've been an atheist for a long long time but i'm finally just going to admit it i have returned to faith but as a christian i believe in redemption and if he were alive i would say he can find forgiveness he can find redemption and you know he needs to pay for his crimes but he will find redemption i would never want anybody to take their own life that that is not what this is about this is not bullying no. somebody this is talking about the real truth because you won't find it if you just do a google search and that's the sad thing if you speak out against this guy you're automatically a transphobe and he wasn't even transgender he wasn't he he was they, just a, per, a a pervert that liked to dress like women why should transgender people okay like why should people who have let me rephrase that people who have gender dysphoria let me be very specific yeah. gender dysphoria which is in the dsm how, whatever you want to call it, but I'm talking about people who, which is less than less than one percent of the population, but people who, as a, usually it expresses itself when you, when the person's a toddler. That's when it starts, and mm -hmm. it used to be it was primarily um, boys who mm -hmm. experienced it. But that feeling that you were born in the wrong body or having a discomfort in your mm -hmm. your biology, your body. Why should those people be lumped in with some fetishist? abuser like this yeah. who took advantage of people some pervert i mean that's the best word for him in my estimation is pervert yeah. and he um you know to put that on the the backs of people with gender dysphoria and say this guy represents you they don't want that you don't no, you don't get don't. to speak for all of them no. <laughs> like he trans you know 
the, the he was not transgender and most onagana files are not transgender yeah that they don't have any time he fit the bill he's a 49 year old man most onagana files they they usually end up being middle-aged men like mm-hmm. you said that are heterosexual in their sexuality yes. they're usually married or or prefer women yeah and that they love to dress like women and get some kind of sexual gratification from them like that. And that they've become so desensitized because of the things they're in. It's, it's a fetish. It's, it's a no fetish. different than a feeder. You know, I, I cover a lot on the fat acceptance movement. It's no oh. different than feeders that like to feed their partner to the fact that, you know, to the point that they're so big that they're bedridden and completely, it's the same kind of sick. And when people come to me uh, talking about your kink shaming, yeah, I am. Yeah. There's some kinks that absolutely <laughs> need to be shamed. <laughs> yes. Isn't that funny when people are like, don't don't shame anything. Anything? Really? Really? Yeah. <laughs> some yeah. things are not healthy. Can we just say objectively yeah. some things are like, disturbing? Yeah. If you like somebody that's a little bigger, a little extra chunk in the trunk, you do you. But right. when you're trying to purposely feed somebody to being immobile, I got something to say about that. Something's wrong with you. Yes. Yeah, I've, and- I've seen a documentary about one of those feeders and it was so disgusting. It showed the husband, the woman was already bedridden. Mm-hmm. It was terrible. It could, and the husband would feed her, like make this slop out of syrup and other stuff and just funnel, pour it through a funnel. Yeah, funnel. Yeah. Funnel yeah. and chocolate milk and stuff. I'm just like, yeah. what? It's disgusting. Ugh. But yeah, this, this, I agree. I think it's in the same class of, you know, just really, um, really damaging fetishes and, and it's not representative of, of people who have gender dysphoria and, Mm -hmm. and here's the kicker. This is what really made me just, wow. Okay. I saw leftists like George Takei, of course, spreading the censored, the version of what this story is about, the propaganda version, which is. Mm innocent trans woman you know yeah bullied to the Mm -hmm. point of taking her on life because of Mm -hmm. conservatives that kind of crap and i also saw some of the big left-wing sites on facebook uh posting about it and same thing they did they were not telling their readers anything about the porn any of that and so um here's what's really funny if you went into the comments like i did and said hey why aren't you telling your readers about this here's some news articles about it and Mm -hmm. actually the new york times did end up covering the porn aspect of it i I have to give them credit they finally did did. so i finally was able to give them a mainstream media not the new york post or 1819 which was the only ones that weren't covering it at first yeah Yeah. so finally because those cultists will only read sources they're approved cult sources they they wouldn't look at it till there was a New York Times article. So finally, it's like, here's a news article. Why don't you read it? Hey, did you know two of his victims have spoken to the local news down there? Here's an article about it. And I, I said something, you know, why aren't you telling your viewers about all the porn and the women and children he was taking advantage of and victimizing in his town? And in the comments, some of the leftists were like, what? And they did read the article. But a few, even that, those facts, even being delivered from the New York Times, wasn't enough for them they just stuck to script and a few of them one guy starts calling me a trumper he knows nothing about me Mm -hmm. calls me a trump or whatever that means and i was like he's like you trumpers and you you know your white christian nationalism and i was like are you kidding me this guy bubba copeland has pictures with trump he was a trumper he was white christian a man a a pastor Mm -hmm. a conservative oh my goodness why are you defending this guy who took advantage who he was everything but transgender, children. which is yes. what you're saying, <laughs> you know, and and that's the thing. What's the difference between <laughs> Bubba Copeland and uh, Joe Olstein or any of the other, you know, Jimmy Swagger, any mm-hmm. of the other big, any other conservative preacher that goes down for either, you know, having a secret gay life or doing some sort of other crime or sexual thing that comes out? Those same leftists, if Bubba Copeland had just been busted for being gay or being, you know, whatever, they would like be trumpeting it all over the place. Yeah. If it was somebody like. They would have been like a hypocrite, you know. Yeah. But because they perceive him as transgender, it's an entirely different. It's a, it's a bait and switch. It's an entirely different thing. Yes. And it, and it, it, it's amazing what, uh, a shield that is to use that as a shield for any criticism which is what they're doing and saying 
-hmm. well, we're going to call this person trans and that means it's a shield and you can't criticize any of their unethical, immoral, predator type behavior, um, victimizing people. Just We're just going to ignore it and paint this person as a, as a hero. And I think I think that's really why it made me the one of two reasons why this story really I was obsessed with it for like a month and so angry about it. And the, and the other reason was because, mm -hmm. because like I said, he led his whole congregation astray and he mm -hmm. would stand up there. He even stood up there his last Sunday sermon. He stood up there after the story came out and he, from the pulpit told his congregation that this was just some private hobby that his wife and he had for laughs for to have a laugh uh, and he uh, has nothing to be ashamed of. That's Congregation Church, people on Facebook. I've been an object of an internet attack. An article that was written about my capacity as a mayor, capacity as a pastor. Well, the article is not who or what I am. Yes, I have taken pictures with my wife in the privacy of our home in an attempt to humor because I know I'm not a handsome man nor a beautiful woman either. I apologize for any embarrassment caused by my private and personal life that has come publicly. This will not cause my life to change. This will not waver my devotion to my family, to serving my city, and to serving my church. I'm thankful for the grace of God and the willingness to forgive. I have nothing to be ashamed of. A lot of things that were said were taken out of context. And in conclusion, I love my family. They're number one. And again, I'm sorry for what my actions have caused. And I'm thankful for the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that have reached out to me today in love and I know that there are others that have not but just know I love you and Jesus loves you as well but he said I have nothing yeah. to be ashamed of and like you said Tracy it's that made me that it's so infuriating because it's the exact opposite example you should be setting mm -hmm. for Christians because the gospel says like you you do have something in that case to be ashamed of and you should confess it and you should repent and ask for forgiveness and it will be granted to you, but you yeah. have to humble yourself enough to say, I messed up. I did wrong. And it was like, he couldn't get, he couldn't get there. That very first step of I messed up. I did wrong. Right. He, he couldn't do that. So at least Jimmy Swaggart apologized. Happened. Yeah. At least he said, I messed up. I did wrong. Yeah. You know, whether or not the repentance was real, who knows, but at right. least he said, I did wrong. Yeah. Like this guy to the very end, as far as we know, was just, complete rebellion against god yeah. and that made me so like oh and the way they were lionizing him after doing that to his congregation i was like uh, yeah i did do yeah. a few videos about him <laughs> and, but, it, but it's just one of those things you know and if and if he had not done the porn stuff which to me is you know is all we know i think that's just scratching the surface of what this guy did but if he was not doing any of that and this had just been a proclivity that he and his wife shared in private. First of all, I don't think 1819 would have ever broke that story if that was mm -hmm. all it was. And second, I would have been angry too that they had done that to him. You know, they, yeah. that's all it was, just something private between he and his wife that got out there and people drug him for it. I'd be angry too, but that's not the case. That's not yeah. the case at all. It's bringing God into your transgressions really makes me just, I saw it. This is a true crime channel, so I'm going to really quickly switch gears, just tell you real quick about this story. And we get back to Bubba. I don't want to I don't want to take you entirely no, off no, the path. No. But last night I watched little true crime you know, episodes all yeah. the time if I'm driving, whatever. And um, uh, my husband and I had a road trip. We were coming back from it. It's my time to drive. So I get to put on what I want. He's watching videos about baking bread. He just bought a mill. We're going to make our own bread. <laughs> And he's like got all kinds of books. He's such a bread nerd now. He's like, I'm going to watch. And it's all these Southern ladies, my, you know. <laughs> my mother makes bread, so they would have a lot to talk about. So when he's driving, we're listening to bed bread baking videos. And then it's my turn to drive. I'm like, murder. <laughs> so, <laughs> and 
so this one that came on, uh, I think it was, it was uh, true crime, not true crime daily. I forget the channel, but anyway, true crime network, maybe you might even know this case. Who knows? It was a California case and it was this, this was infuriating. It was this couple in their small town, much like Bubba Copeland. They mm -hmm. were really admired. They were looked at as, you know, a, a pillar of the, this couple. They were pillars of the community. They were very active in their church mm -hmm. um, and they had kids and they were this attractive couple. Turns out, turns out they were living a swinger lifestyle behind mm -hmm. the scenes that no one knew about. They were having sex with this other married couple that was their best friends and they were all swapping mm -hmm. and they had other boyfriends and girlfriends mm -hmm. all, over, all on the side. And then the wife uh, met a much younger guy who was a Christian and who was homeschooled. So he was 22 when they met and she was like 33. She was like 11 years older than him. And she meets this young 22 year old who doesn't have a lot of experience with the world. He, 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 he was homeschooled. He, a very religious family. Um, and they start doing Bible study together, Bible study. And, then they start an affair, which mm -hmm. even though she's in this open marriage with her husband, she doesn't tell her husband about. She keeps this one relationship secret. And they end up plotting to and killing the husband mm -hmm. so she can get the life insurance and stuff and they can live happily ever after mm -hmm. together. But if you listen, the, the police started listening into their phone calls back and forth after the murder, mm -hmm. tr trying to solve it, right? And there's all these recordings of them seriously, seriously on the phone with one another talking about how God led them to do this murder. God wants them to be together. They're praying together on the phone to God to like make sure they don't uh, give us the words to speak when we're interrogated so we don't give ourselves away kind of thing. Like mm -hmm. God help protect us and lead the investigation in a different way. And they, I'm like, I'm listening to this like, I don't understand. Do you really believe this? That God wants you to murder? I, I, how can you get to that point of delusion? Yeah, I you are I don't following know. Satan. You okay. are talking to Satan. <laughs> like let's, that's who you're talking yeah, to. Yeah. Well, that well, was me. Let's address the <laughs> elephant in the room. I'm a gay Christian. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever your opinion is on homosexuality and and the Bible, I I personally believe there's some translation issues there. But I live a, what would be considered, except for the fact I'm married to another woman, would be considered a traditional marriage, you know, monogamy, you know, that, that sort of thing, you know, and I, I try to be a very moral person. Now, I, I don't want, I, I don't even argue this point with people anymore because that's between me and God. But because there is question there, I would not feel comfortable being the pastor of a church or the leader of a flock because of that and you know and if, if there's gay pastors out there that feel that they are good go for you know whatever as long as you're open and honest about it with your congregation but i wouldn't feel comfortable being in there and i certainly wouldn't use god as a justification for something that i felt guilty about and if he if he didn't feel guilt if bubba copeland or this couple didn't feel guilty about it why are they trying so hard to keep it a secret to say that god told me this is okay yeah yeah God told me this is like an mur this murder is an exception. This murder mm -hmm. is an exception. This mm -hmm. porn is an exception. Taking advantage mm -hmm. of this kid sexually. God told me it's cool. Yeah. Like that that mm -hmm. doesn't happen. <laughs> and it just it just uh sorry, I, I went sidetracked on another case. No, but I just, no, but it, it all fits. I saw that yesterday. You I'll send it to you because I bet you'd also be no, horrified. I, I, I have heard the case. <laughs> I can't think of the name of the case, but I I I I think I've listened to that same that same story but yeah and like i said i think what two consenting adults did i mean god is not stupid god you know we are made in his image he's probably a lot like us in a lot of ways what happens between two consenting adults is a lot different than that that's my opinion on it so but still i would not feel comfortable pastoring a church if because there's doubt there that's just how I feel about it. And it's certainly not to use God as a justification for something that is just totally immoral. Tracy, I'm going to say something that might be controversial on your channel. Go ahead. I wouldn't feel comfortable pastoring a church because I'm a woman. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> now I'm going to be called an internal misogynist. No. I'm just saying I'm not entirely convinced. I know there's back and forth and I do know some female pastors who I like uh. and expect and remi- admire, but I don't really know for sure. That's something I'm still thinking a lot about. I've read the verses against um, that, that people point to to say women shouldn't be in a position where they're preaching. But I've, and I've also read the ones and the examples that women give me oftentimes to say, well, they could and they should. And here's an example of where they did. And I don't really know, but mm-hmm. I do know just from looking around in society that um, on average, I'm not sure if women um make not that they don't make we don't make great leaders but i think we have diff on average again there's always outliers but mm-hmm. on average i think uh maybe imparting wisdom in that way maybe there are some men on average who are more suited to it now i'm still going to be called a sexist even though i tried to be nuanced with what i'm saying mm-hmm. but uh i'm not exactly sure and 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 regardless me personally, this woman, this just this one, I mm-hmm. know I should not be yeah. a preacher. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I need Same. a preacher. <laughs> I'm like, I, still, I need I need one. Go ahead. <laughs> I mean, I still cuss and everything else. Yeah. So I'm just like, you know, they're just words. God knows in my heart, you know. And, and, you know, I was a Christian for a long time before I became an atheist. I went through that transition and now transitioning back. I feel like a baby Christian again. Mm-hmm. So it's, and, you know, I think I'll, things will change with me. I mean, sexuality is not going to change. And I'm married. I mean, I am mar- legally married. Marriage means a lot to me. And so I'm going to remain in my marriage. <laughs> you know, that's I, the way it is. I, um, I just want to say I'm very happy for you, Tracy. And I'm happy that you also felt comfortable telling your audience yeah. that you came to God because that took, I think it took me a lot longer to do that than it did you. Cause I was so, I don't know why I just kind of was like, I should keep that separate. And also people will think I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm very, but I'm ha- really happy for you. And thank yeah. you. And, and I appreciate you being so open and honest. I mean, a lot of people would have been like, Hey, Christian, that's a misnomer. And you were like, God loves everybody. And that makes me feel you good. Keep, you keep seeking. That's the thing about being a Christian, I think is Anthony and I, my husband and I were talking about this a lot because he was a Christian when he was young Mm -hmm. and then he walked away from God like I did, even though we didn't know each other then, but, um, we had a similar path. He walked away from God for over 10 years or so. And, um, we were talking about some of this during our road trip and it was sort of, um, the thing that he understand that was saying he understands about Christianity now that he didn't when he was younger is that it's a path of continually seeking and learning more. And I think when you get stagnant, if if you're a believer and and you get stagnant and you feel like you figured everything out, that might be an indication you're a little far from God right now, or you're off the path. This is, this is what I've learned. I have been able to reconcile my faith with my former atheism, because Mm -hmm. even though I'm a believer again, I can still look at the Bibles where there are obvious contradictions. I mean, they're there, you know, and, and know that that is, those are mistakes in translation for men that translated the Bible. It's been through, and I'm not talking about the people, the the original authors of the Bible, whoever they were. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about all the different ways it's been translated through languages throughout time. There's going to be contradictions there. But what you have to, I look at the New Testament and I take the words of Jesus and that's what I take to my heart. And I do my, my best to live a life that I think he would be proud of. Yeah. That's the way I feel about it. Yes. And for any, uh, old time, Christ, old time, a Christian for any <laughs> long time Christian, I would say this. Uh, I know sometimes you guys think you have nothing to learn from baby Christians, <laughs> some of you so not all mo- not most of you probably some of you i have had someone who really treated me with contempt for being what what they called a baby christian mm-hmm. um but uh and here's what i would say about when people first find faith the reading someone coming to faith and and doing what you're saying tracy like 
all I'm going to do right now is look at the red letter words or the words mm -hmm. Jesus said. Mm -hmm. That makes total sense. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's exactly where I started. Mm -hmm. And the, and for uh, any longtime Christians, mm -hmm. um, some of them need to get back to they it. need to get back to that yes <laughs> and and yes and also like not push people to a place where like with my husband for example when we first started going to church he still referred to himself as agnostic not as mm. christian and if i had if i if i had been some pushy I, i'm just saying this because i've met some of these pushy types evangel evangelical types it, it, can you imagine if i had been on his back all the time about like you know mm -hmm. define what you are and define god, you know and god or, will reveal to me what he wants me to know yes. and he called me back god called me back that's and i, I know for my so i'm getting real we're getting real preachy here it's okay and i uh, <laughs> atheist cat i know you're out there uh don't, don't hate me he's my smart ass atheist that always comments on my videos uh, I, I, I still love you i love you <laughs> i still love you but uh, i hope you still love me Atheist Felicia, cat. I hope you still love me too. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, I mean, I, I'm still the same Tracy. I'm just, you know, going down a different path, but I consider myself an agnostic Christian because I don't know everything. I'm still yeah. looking. That's what agnostic means. I, I don't know. I'm not sure. And that, that makes total sense to me. So, yeah. And yeah. I, I, over time I got more, I have gotten more defined about certain things that I believe um but it takes a while for me you know because like i said it's a continual searching and seeking and mm -hmm. the only time i get worried is when i feel like i've been stagnant for a while and kind of going through the motions and then it's like oh i need to like pay attention to this and pray for guidance and hey look i need some light on this path <laughs> to know i'm mm -hmm. still going the right direction god help me out anyway mm -hmm. i don't know you atheist cat but i like your name and thanks for tolerating <laughs> <laughs> the Christian talk. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, um, but getting back to Bubba, Bubba Copa, yeah. like I said, the, we're not here. We love, I have so many transgender friends uh, in real life and online. And I love each and every one of them. They're great people, but they're just that. They're great people. They live a normal life. They're not the crazy people online that are just pretending in my opinion to be transgender and that's why i look at bubba copeland and i want to say he's not transgender don't believe no. the headlines no not at all and like it's it's so <sighs> sorry i'm frustrated i'm trying to figure out how to say this i have noticed online recently on twitter for example some of the people who are pushing back against woke ideology and you have all these different alliances that have happened right mm -hmm. between alliances between christians and atheists for example who both oppose social justice and woke ideology because they can see it for this sort of crazy identity politics yeah. obsessed christians and gays i mean thing, right yeah. christians and gays these, these different alliances that have formed and lately i've started to see some of those break down and people start to attack each other taking their eyes i in my opinion off of the focus, the prize the prize and um one of the things i just have seen uh very recently is some of the people who uh oppose trans ideology like i do being pushed on children and being preached as a thing as a th you know that this idea that um that it's normal you know, they're teaching children that it's normal that you might be trained. It's not normal. It's it's no. a mental disorder. It's and it, very small, very small, small section of the population. Right. Most children, especially gay children, go through some sort of gender dysphoria. I did. It's yes. called being a feminine man, a feminine boy or a, a masculine girl. And I'm yes. still very masculine. I was the son my father never had because... I went hunting with him. I went fishing with him. I was his little boy, you know, for the most part. And if I had grown up in today's society, there's and gone through the same, yeah, you know, puberty. I don't like my body. I'm uncomfortable with myself. I might have ended up being transitioned at a very young age, or at least on that path. And yeah. that's why it's so dangerous. It is. They're and erasing I've, I've, gay. They're er erasing lesbians. They oh, really are. And, and gay boys. 
they're doing actual conversion therapy, physical yeah. conversion therapy where they're trying to change your body. But, but I, what I have noticed and very recently is that some of the people who are, who oppose gender ideology, like I do, like you do being pushed on kids. Um, some of those people are now sort of like turning against or sectioning off the trans people or the the gender dysphoric people who also oppose gender ideology mm -hmm. and sort mm -hmm. of saying like, no, you're not a part of this and, and no pet troons they say and stuff like that. They, and they should I, be on the forefront. They should be on the front lines. I think they have a very people like yeah. Sarah Higdon, um, Blair, Blair White, White, like Buck, uh, Buck Angel, Buck Angel. I think they have a very specific experience and, and life experience to draw from to reach a different type of person than perhaps you or I or one of these mm -hmm. people criticizing them can reach. And uh and I and I don't I don't like to see it. I mean under people can do what they want. I'm gonna do what I want, but uh but it does it does sometimes like hurt my heart to see it because it's like you're Sarah Higdon's gonna reach someone in the woke world and maybe wake them up and mm -hmm. uh dispel some of their uh uh prejudices or some false beliefs that they have about trans people or gender dysphoria in, the end, in a way that I, I can't you and I carry in the end we're both middle-aged white women we are and there's only so many people that middle-aged white women can reach it takes an actual transgender woman it takes a gay man it takes um, a black conservative a hispanic conservative to reach certain an atheist conservative to reach certain people that we can't because there are, unfortunately, I, I completely agree, because unfortunately that belief system is so, when they are in it, when they are in that cult, they are have been trained and programmed to um, to listen to people based on their quote unquote identity, what identity groups they're in. And they give different weight to people based on those identity groups. And so if you're mm. trying to reach someone who's still in that cult, it is mm. very shocking to them and it catches their attention to have someone in the so-called identity group or the marginalized group that they think they're defending mm -hmm. say no you don't speak for me and i don't agree with you exactly and that's a shock to the system yeah because they're because everything they've been told is that this group mm -hmm. thinks this way mm -hmm. you know it doesn't. i can't tell you how can't tell you how many of my lesbian friends i've lost over mm -hmm. the years just for not supporting this madness Wow. And if I really talk to them, I don't think they really support it either if they really understood it. But, you know, they're just like LGBT. I get so sick of the premium pack. I, <laughs> I, 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 premium it, pack. it's become too mixed. We need to stick, you know, LGB and original trans, that is the actual gender dysphoric people. We need to break off from everything else because everything else is just a big old convoluted mess. It's just, uh, it's, it's very effective though, the programming to put it all under an umbrella. It's like, so they're, like you said, privately, they might agree with you or have some issues with trans and kids at the very least, but publicly they're afraid to take that position, especially if they're not trans or gender dysphoric, you know, cause they're like, I don't want to be considered transphobic. It's so funny. I went to, um, in Georgetown, Texas, they had our first pride event for Georgetown's first big pride event happened. It was last month. And I went to, with a sign that said children cannot consent to double mastectomy mm -hmm. or sterilization because the people who organized it and the non-binary pastor that they had giving a sermon about queering Christianity, that they all agree with trans and kids that, that, a non-binary reverend or, or or what have you from Austin um, talks about it all the time that uses the double speak about like, let's protect kids by letting them be sterilized and having their body parts taken off. And so I went there with these signs and so did uh, some people from my church and some other people I didn't know. And my pastor, we were there, we were a very small group compared to them. But what was interesting was uh, we, you know, the typical thing, a lot of woke people screaming at me, screaming at us and being rude and, and all kinds of things. But there were two people who did talk to me about my sign and who agreed with my sign. And we had good conversations mm -hmm. and both were trans women mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. both were the actual group that all those people yelling thought that they were speaking for. 
And I just thought that's so amazing because these people over here yelling at me, um, hateful things who think who who claim to disagree with my sign. Um, mm -hmm. they have no idea that that there's two people here who agree with the sign who yeah. they think they're speaking for. Mm-hmm. It's just like most people think atheists are all screaming liberals and a vast majority of them are but there are you know in the atheist circles there are very conservative atheists i remember i'm still member of a group called atheists for liberty afl mm -hmm. uh it's it's led by a, a young man by the name of thomas sheedy he's awesome i'm gonna oh, have him on the him. channel soon he's a good friend of mine um I know I'm going to have him on here real soon. He, I, I mean, I came out to him as a newly returned Christian. He still wants me to be in the organization. We have religious people in our organization because they stand against anti, their anti-wokeness and they stand against the full merging of, uh, of government and religion. They want the separation of church and state. And I still get behind that because nobody needs a theocracy because whose theology is it? That's my, that's, you know, the scary part about it. So, you know, I'm still a member of that group and there are, you know, not a, nobody's a monolith and you have people out there that think just because you're something, you're a monolith and you all have group think and that's not the same. Yeah. That's so cool. You're going to have Thomas on and talk with him. Yeah. He's awesome. He's just, uh, he may, he gives me uh hope for, uh, I believe he's, uh, I believe he's Gen Z. He gives me hope for the next generation of Gen Z. <laughs> I have a few younger people I know like that. I'm like, well, <laughs> mm -hmm. I hope that there are more like you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, um, but yeah, so thank you for being here, Kira. We just wanted to give everybody an uh, overview of the truth about the Bubba Copeland situation. Don't believe what you're being told in mainstream media and uh, always dig deeper. And I think more and more is going to come out about him, but it'll only probably be little channels like a, like mine will carry significantly bigger, but people like us that cover it as it comes out, because mainstream media is not going to cover it I, at all. That's true. And I, or if something really awful comes out, like I think it could, mm -hmm. then suddenly they will be playing catch up mainstream media. Like how could we have known? Yeah. Yeah. Well, don't get me into <clears throat> Hunter Biden. Uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh anyway carrie thank you so much for for being here it's always a pleasure to talk to you oh you are welcome I, i'm you're welcome back on deprogrammed anytime i love hanging out with you and one of these nights we're gonna have to do just a fun like movie night or something yeah absolutely absolutely I and to. i love your your christmas background and it's so it makes me think of it's just this warm uh, pink and blue it makes me think of the vintage i love looking at vintage photos but lately especially vintage christmas photos and mm -hmm. all the vintage christmas ads and stuff have it was that very popular brand of ornaments and stuff at the time mm -hmm. called shiny bright it mm -hmm. looks like one of those ads yeah it's just perfect i well thank you i i love i'm a huge norman rockwell fan so okay. I, I i we buy a lot of decorations that are kind of like that so i love it but uh, anyway, everyone, thank you for joining me. I'll be back soon with another video. And until next time, you don't cry.